We are here at the Harry Potter studio in Tokyo. This is actually the second location. The first one is in London and now they've opened one in Tokyo. We're actually here two days before the grand opening. So let's give you an exclusive look. Let's go. As soon as we made it in and got our headbands, we headed straight to the Frog Cafe to grab a quick bite to eat. I think the cupcakes are pretty cool, but should I stick to the theme and get the Gryffindor or do a little more like the colorful one? Why do you want to try? There were so many colorful options to choose from, but I got the strawberry flavored Gryffindor cupcake, which had little bits of strawberry inside. Usually if it's this thick, it's very like sugary and overwhelmingly sweet, but yeah, it's very buttery. And then the cupcake itself is really mildly sweet with little bits of strawberry. I got the lemon donut. It's not as strong of a lemon flavor. Really? Mm. How much does it taste? 500 yen. Does it taste like it's a 500 not... yen donut? Oh no. <laughs> no. All right, so this is the tour entrance, which means it's the beginning of the tour. I just have to show him this and let's go in. Huh, it kind of feels like you're in a storybook. There's like paper cutouts of different scenes from the movie, Harry with different hairstyles. This is his long hair boy era. This is his I've matured era. This is so sick. Wow. This is really cool. You can see all of the different covers, posters, and they're in different languages too. What the heck? There's a Japanese version, a Korean version, and a Chinese version. And of course, English too. That's crazy. After spending some time in the room full of posters, they led us into a theater room where we watched a short video. What we didn't expect was for a huge door to be waiting for us behind the screen. There was so much anticipation and a huge line of people just eager to see what's behind the door. Walking into the room felt surreal since it was just like stepping into the movie itself. Everything from the dishes, furniture, character costumes, and room decor was carefully placed. I personally like that they added mannequins into the room since it gave the whole room even more character. Everything looked identical except the ceiling. In the movie, it was actually CG, so this is kind of what it looks like in real life. We got the four groups over here is Ravenclaw, here is Hufflepuff, Gryffindor, and Slytherin. Also, I noticed there's details in the flooring. They said it's to make it so that it lasts for many years. Very sturdy. I've just entered the next room. Whoa, it's moving. Wow. That's cool. I wonder how much money went into that. So we're gonna use this QR code scan it and we can put our faces onto one of the frames. What should we do? Are we scared? Are we happy? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Let's walk over to the next room. It's all kind of connected. There's more little sets of different scenes from the movie here. This is the Gryffindor common room. This is one of the classic sets from the movie and it's crazy to see it in real life. We actually just saw this last week to refresh our memory. We watched the first movie and saw this room there too. This is Slytherin's common room, which obviously has a different feel to it. Oh, that's cool. You can actually sit at their table. This is Dumbledore's parlor, and it's connected to his office. This is Dumbledore's office. Look, and you can see the phoenix. Hey, what's up, dude? Oh my. The Quidditch filming experience was by far the best interactive activity they had since you can reenact a scene from the movie with complete strangers. <laughs> I've only watched the first episode, so I didn't know this is what he looks like. Oh my god, is this the snake from the museum that escaped? The one that was communicating with Harry Potter? Yeah, we could be like just really wrong, but if you watched it, please let us know. So we are at Hagrid's hut. You can actually go inside and see what it's like inside. Oh, look how big Hagrid is. Oh, what's his name again? Bang. Look at his tiny bed. His bed is quite small for his size. We are so close to where we can get butter beer, and I'm thirsty, so this is perfect timing. Wow. It's 
totally different from Universal Studios where you have an actual dedicated shop for butterbeer. There's other stuff on the menu too, like popcorn and potato chips. And they've also got coffee, donuts, and cookies. Oh, it smells so sweet. It smells like butterscotch. Cheers. Wow. wow. That's good. Can't be healthy, but it's good. It's like butterscotch ice cream flavored. I don't think I can finish it. This is way too sweet. You had just the foam. <laughs> yeah, finish it. I mean, it's really sweet for me too. I feel like I'm already starting to feel a little bit of the sugar rush. So I wish they had like an ice cream form of this. Yeah. So you can have like a popsicle. Mm. What's cool about this cup is that they're actual like hard plastic, good quality. There's a dedicated spot where you can wash your glasses. They even give you this back. And you can take them back as a souvenir. I just finished my butter beer and I'm really full, but we're gonna head over to platform nine and three fourths. Wow, it's actually pretty big. You can see that the suitcase and cart is halfway through the wall, just like it would be in the movie. There's also three different types so that it doesn't get overcrowded, and each cart has a different thing on them. So choose wisely. We just found out that we can also go inside the train. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. I remember this scene. It's like one of the first scenes in the first movie. Okay, I think this is an order of different movies. This is from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and here is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Right across from the train, we actually have a gift shop, the railway shop. Let's go inside. Wow, they have merch just for this platform nine and three fourths. Look at this, you have a train merch. <laughs> this is the railway exclusive section where you can even customize like this writing to make it so that's targeted to whoever you want it to. We just checked out the train area. Now let's check out the Ministry of Magic. Walking into the Ministry of Magic made me feel like I was undercover knowing it's a community built to be hidden from the muggle world. This room also had mannequins wearing the exact clothes the characters in the movies were wearing and, as expected, they also had the Ministry of Munchies filled with lots of pastries. We're in the animal and creature props room and I thought a lot of this was CG. Of course they do probably use CG. but. A lot of it, they actually hand make and it's really detailed. You can see kind of like their draft process. They use a lot of silicone on people's faces like this. Here's Dubby. We just arrived at the area where they have tons of green screens and they have like a photo booth and also a place where you can have like room ride with a green screen behind you. So they'll like put that on top of an image. We can't show you this whole process, but we will show you the results. Let's go. After the room ride experience, we explored the sound effects area and headed straight to the main attraction, Diagon Alley. This is Ollivander's, the famous store where Harry's wand chose him. As you guys probably see with the video, the lighting always changes here. So sometimes it gets bright and then they tone it down to make it a little bit more mysterious and fit a different vibe. After walking down Diagon Alley, we saw the giant Every Flavor Beans box, the famous castle used in the film, and the tour ended at the gift shop. So we just finished the studio tour and it led us to the gift shop, which is where we are right now. It took us four hours to finish the tour. So I felt really short. I know, it, it felt like a one hour. It was fun! There was a lot of sets, characters, behind the scenes information. There are certain aspects that uh, Universal Studio did better, like okay. the castle, but there are some aspects that Universal Studio doesn't have. Like, For example, the food, right? Yeah, the food, the food here with like movie sets yeah, here. Movie sets. It was 5,800 Japanese yen for an adult price. I think if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, you have to come here at least once. Oh yeah, 100%. Right? There's only two locations, so definitely worth visiting. Alright, thanks guys for watching. See you in the next one.